Hey guys, Angry Monkey here. With Jackson Farrell from Hot Pile of Garbage. And we're doing some more 999, and Snake is still missing, and Lotus is suggesting that we leave somebody behind doing two teams of three, because there's no way to do five and two, and there's no real way to do four and three. Yep. Someone's going to get have to get voted off the island. Or voted to stay on the ship. Yep. <laughs> it wasn't pleasant, but she was right. You're going to be playing reverse survivor here. Mm. Well, it's still kind of survivor. You're trying to survive. Yeah. I stand corrected again. <laughs> uh, there wasn't any way that the numbers worked out. If the I'm not even standing. I'm sitting. Strike three. I'm out. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I have nothing to say to that. Uh, there wasn't any way that the numbers worked out. If one group was four, the other group would always have a digital root that didn't match a door. When Seven spoke, his voice was strained. Then you're saying we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind? Yes, we do! Given our circumstances, it's logically and morally the best solution. The other, oh, sorry. If the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. No, oh, that's too cruel. What's so cruel about it? To, to sacrifice someone like that. Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant. We shouldn't sacrifice anyone. I told you that's impossible. Wake up! Whoa, whoa, come down, you two. Same a step between Lotus and June. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is that you should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Utilitarianism. Exactly! That's how democracy works. And for that reason, I think the only favor fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is through a vote. Oh, dang, we really are going to do like this voting. What do you think? Night. No, that's terrible. I'm not asking you. Yeah, Shut up! Yeah, kind of were. <laughs> what about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree, I guess. All right, that's one vote four. Counting mine, that's two. Seven? I can't say I agree with you, but... We don't exactly have a choice. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Glad to see you get it! If I can get one more vote, then it's decided! What about you, Clover? Clover had moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the on one of the beds. Her whole body drooped. Junpei didn't didn't know if she even heard Lotus' proposal. Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid a hand on her shoulder. I've got a feeling that she's gonna give herself up voluntarily. Your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors! We searched everywhere, but we didn't find him! Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? Clover slowly lifted her face. Let's go look for him together, okay? If we sacrifice one person, then we can go look for him! You agree with me, right? Clover nodded once. Okay, good, I didn't have to read that. <laughs> <laughs> the motion carries! Lotus spun around and walked toward Junpei. Now let's start a vote to- That won't be necessary. Ace had barely sp Ace had barely spoken for Lotus' entire speech and everyone jumped a little. Six pairs of eyes turned to look at him. He didn't seem to notice or even care. I will stay. That should solve our problem, yes? Hmm. Mm. Uh, Ace, what are you saying? No, you can't do that. That won't stop anything. June's voice shook. <laughs> it really did. Yeah, and she looked around desperately for someone to agree with her. Ace simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust you, each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic, and then there's just nuts. These doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. 
if we go through them, you won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. True. But that will not be the case once you've escaped from the ship. What? Please, I beg you. Once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Ideally within the time limit Zero has given us. No, that's ridiculous! There's no way we could get back in time! Finally, Junpei could, could hold his tongue no longer. We've only got five hours left! We don't even know where the heck we are! How on earth are we going to find someone to come and rescue you? Then perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me? Or perhaps you would be willing to leave June behind? Ace's voice was dignified and without a hint of cruelty or malice. Junpei had no rebuttal. Cold logic carries the day. Yeah. You see, there's no other choice. Then I see we've come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves about me. Go, quickly. Junpei stood frozen by indecision, unable to move. Jun bit her lips so hard that Junpei feared she would break the skin. Santa stood against the wall, calm and aloof. Seven tore his beanie from his head and turned it over anxiously in his hands. Clover stared at Ace with an expression Junpei was unable to decipher. Lotus's attitude, however, was different from the others. Good! Let's accept his kind offer then! She smiled, her eyes bright. Why is she so happy that somebody's sacrificing themselves? Good. I think this is the best for me. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. Perhaps it's my age, but I get tired so easily these days. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself down to the floor next to one of the beds. <sighs> From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard the screeching of metal on metal. <laughs> It was almost like the ship was screaming. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Wouldn't, would it really hold up until their time limit was up? Already D-Deck was flooded. In the sudden silence, the only sound was the sad metal wail of the ship. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who Oh, wait, wait. First. Metal whale. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so hardcore. All right. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? We're wasting time! Why don't we hurry it up? As if a spell had been broken, the others all began to talk at once. You know, that ship kind of sounds like me! <laughs> huh. You're right. We should get going. You're right. It does sound like you. <laughs> That's all we can do right now. Seven. Seriously. Honestly, I was kind of getting sick of listening to you guys talk. <laughs> Let's get moving already! Oh, you hanging too, a Santa? lampshade on the medium. <laughs> my brother. Wait, all of you. Let's just calm down and think about this. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be. Right, Chubby? Say something. Y yeah, let's think. There's gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine. Forget about it. I'll figure it out on my own. She huh. spun around and ran toward Ace. He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Come on, Ace, please stand up. You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure out a way that we can all get out of here. Then it happened. Dun dun dun. Oh. Huh? Uh, okay, so Ace fell forward. He slumped over into the onto the wooden floor, his body folded in half like a boxer out cold. Ace! June cried out and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arm around his neck and did her best to lift him up. What happened, Ace? Say something! She shook him frantically. His eyes fluttered open. Oh good, he's not dead. <laughs> wouldn't that be something? <laughs> <laughs> With this game, I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> I'm all right. His voice was weak and, si and slightly slurred. How are you? Fine? This... He held out his left arm and slowly opened his hand. What's he... Oh. It was a syringe in a small vial. The vial was empty. It had only recently been opened. A few drops clung to the sides. There was a label taped to the side of the container. It read Soparol Beta. 
Separal beta. Jubei had no idea what it meant or what kind of medicine it might be. It sounds like something to put you to sleep. Did you use this? Yes. It's just anesthetic. I'll be fine. Anesthetic? I found it earlier. While we were searching the hospital rooms. I thought it might be useful later. I didn't think I'd be using it on myself. Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I like to take a nap. <laughs> really am very tired. Junpei knew that it, that wasn't why he'd done it. Ace had injected himself with anesthetic to forestall Junpei and Jun's attempts to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there was nothing they can do. He'd injected himself so that way they'd be forced to leave him behind. Ace! Hmm? Is there something you want to say? I'd just like to sleep a little. Can you keep it down? No! Don't Ace! <sighs> Don't fall asleep! Ah, you feel warm. So comfortable. Oh, this is getting creepy. I don't know Ace's eyelids <laughs> drooped further and further. You had to make it weird, didn't you? Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> almost as though we were dying. <laughs> almost as though we were He's boy. dying. Ace! Ace! She shook his, his shoulder again and again, but this time he didn't respond. Only the gentle rising and falling of his chest told him he was alive. Junpei was relieved to see he was, in fact, still breathing. Uh -huh. He lifted Ace up off the floor and laid him on the bed he'd been leaning against. When Junpei turned around, Lotus gave him a look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now! We can't let this sacrifice go to waste! Right? She wasn't feeling any remorse. Junpei was sure of that. Still, he held no grounds upon which to oppose her. Lotus is stone cold. Yeah. And logical. She's probably just cold because she's not wearing a lot of clothes, and so she's probably <laughs> cold. Felt True. wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly, Santa spoke. Yeah, but we're not done choosing yet, are we? Huh? What do you mean? Well, we haven't decided who's going into what door. Ah, yes! Yes, that's true! Well, enough of this screwing around, man. Let's get, let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um, I want door number eight. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Got it. You're eight. You're next, seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with that old lady. <laughs> what? What did you just say? Her face distorted by rage, Lotus took a step toward Seven. He threw up his hands and made a face like a child caught with his hands in the cookie jar. Ah! You're going to get it next time! I'll have you know I am a perfect lady! She shot him a glare that would have melted steel, then turned and stalked off. Alright, who's next, man? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei, which door do you want, man? At last. Junpei's mind was already made up. Hmm. Do we want to uh, decide in this episode? Um, or? this is a good point to break. Okay, well, um, I know that you're starting to get tired. I, I actually might think maybe make the decision and then in the next episode do the room. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Um, let's pick door number. We've got uh, Lotus... On eight, seven, seven on, on seven, seven, and anyone on three yet? Nobody's on three yet. Okay, um, let's see. Don't trust Lotus. Seven's got amnesia. <laughs> um, I'll stick with the amnesiac. I think I'm gonna go with door seven. Okay, seven it is. Yeah. All right, then, that means June's got to go through door eight. What? Why? What? 
Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but began to explain. <laughs> if the six of us are gonna leave, gonna keep going without leaving anyone behind, there's only three ways we can do it, man. Plan A. Okay, so go through seven with three, five, and eight, and go through eight with four, six, and seven. Plan B. Go through seven with four, five, and seven, and go through eight with three, six, and eight. Plan C. Go through 7 with 3, 6, and 7, and go through 8 with 4, 5, and 8. Okay. And that's it. Those are our only options. In other words, 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 can never go through the same doors. You get it now, man? As Santa finished, June looked at over at Junpei, tears welling down at the corners of her eyes. Oh no. You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time? Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. Aww. But he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. We all gotta make sacrifices. Ace did. Yep. Hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah. Probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was seven that interjected. I'm sure they're going to connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't connect, neither team can get through door number nine. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his poop tread <laughs> turds from the butt so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm Dagon sure that son of a Dagon wants us to have, wants to have his fun as Dagon long as Dagon possible. <laughs> Almost. I'm a hardened criminal. Sounds like uh, Boomhauer. Like, dang, <laughs> dang old man, dang old, tell you what man, dang old this and dang old that man, dang old yep. that, dang old. I'm a dang old number puzzle with math all the time. Take add enough numbers to digital root all the time. Just gotta get that nine at the end, man. Ain't gonna work if you don't get the people through the door, man. Tell you what. He's not gonna end this game until we get through the nine door. June said nothing. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with that reassurance, he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna see each other again. I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yeah. Promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. Yeah, you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will go into separate groups. Way to ruin the moment, Santa. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what I do. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Well, whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. Alright, we're ready to go then. Let's move. At Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Clover, Seven, and Junpei walked toward door seven. Santa, Lotus, and June headed for door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Seven took a deep dip breath. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. All right. Yeah. Through the door. Onward to the door. The door had opened. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. Huh? Beep. Beep. Oh, of course. Yeah, we gotta find the dead first. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. He looked to his right, toward door eight. 
June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei, but a girl version. <laughs> she, st she turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. They nodded. Their farewell took almost one and a half seconds. Then sudden, someone took hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him <laughs> bodily through the door. Oh, I guess someone had to do it. Yeah, he heard the sound of the number door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left. No time to waste, guys. Let's get moving. Seven led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as, as fast as they could. After what seemed like for far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hallway. To the left of a wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel on the dead and destroyed it. Whoops. <laughs> hmm, I guess I don't know my own strength. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. So. Safe. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> his his smile forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but. Whew. You never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and neck. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. What? What the crud did you just say? Say it again, I dare you. You have no... You little... You want to die. I'd like to see you try! You little brat. Alright, let's go. Bring it! Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for, uh, this. It's not gonna do us any good. <laughs> Gosh. Chupe sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Is this a good break? I figured it would do the thing where it's like... Oh, with like, the choices? Yeah. Coming up? Okay, pressing onward. Yeah. Wait here for a minute, alright? I'm gonna go see if there are any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for conversation anyway. First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single short hallway that terminated almost immediately at a thick iron wall. Junpei doubted the wall could be moved. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. Oh. Duck, duck, duck. This door's the only option we've got, right? Yeah, looks like it. There was a metal plaque bolted above the door. It read, Operating Room. If it was to be believed, the room on the other side of the door was an operating <laughs> room. <laughs> really? I would. I think that this room, this is operating room, is probably an operating room. Just, yeah. just a hunch. I, I, I could be completely wrong though. Yeah. Something about about it made Junpei feel nervous. Well, there's no point to standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. Yeah. Wait, Lotus is in door eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap! She got told she ain't even here! <laughs> a chill snaked its way down Ju Snake? <laughs> snake? <laughs> a chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed with Clover right behind him. Part of the room just past the door was, an it was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she's darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah! <laughs> what did Clover see? I guess this will probably be a, a good spot, I guess, because yeah. this... I wanted to wait till the thing appears, but we're at... Yeah, but we're at 25 minutes, so this is probably a good uh, 
uh, stopping point. Lucky you guys, you got an extra long episode. Yeah, especially since I only upload every other day or every few days, so yep. it kind of makes up for it. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Yep, so this has been Angry Monkey. And Jackson Farrell. And we are going to say goodbye for now. Hope you enjoyed 999. There's going to be plenty more episodes coming. I'm looking forward to it. And we'll see you then. Yep, goodbye.